Richard has a question about user adoption. So uh, buckle up, everybody. This is going to be right here. What are the biggest challenges your end users face when starting with Microsoft 365? So Richard likes the bold, big topics, apparently. So we're starting at a we're starting at a ten thousand foot level, not at a one thousand foot level. Right. Anybody want to begin? Oh, oh, I could begin, but I don't know if I'd ever stop. Yeah. So you yeah. all just tell me when to stop. Uh, one is proper training. Um, that's the thing that everybody thinks. Yes, most of the applications and things you do are very intuitive, or they've done it before. They've always used mail, or they've always used this. Uh, things are different. They work differently. There's new functionality, things that are built in that weren't, you know, weren't there before. So training is a must. Um, also communication to them. So there's a lot of, I'm just going to use the word attitude maybe, for users. The more they feel communicated with on what's going on, when it's going on, they they embrace it a lot more. When things are shoved on them and they're told they they're they they tend to not be as receptive to to the change right and so um making sure that you're communicating and getting feedback from them on things um it is always very key to one ask for feedback but then two let them know you're actually listening two different things right so go solicit that feedback let them know you've listened you know prove it that you're listening to them um Hey, Stacey, I'd like to say that like one of the things kind of ties into both of these is uh, so years ago, why one of the reasons why I started doing initially with SharePoint, I had a session. Some folks watching might be aware of this. I used to do like, you know, 10 features that you've never used. And it started in SharePoint uh, that you didn't know about, you know, or your you, features you've never used, but should. And I, I had I, I haven't looked in a couple of years now, but at one point over a half a million views of just that slide deck. Uh, just very popular there. But I got into the productivity tips because you have so many people that are familiar with, of course, the office suite and and they're somewhat familiar with Teams and maybe SharePoint and, and OneDrive and the other other tools, the other solutions that are out there. Uh, but they've not they're not familiar with the latest. They're not familiar right. with all the integrations around that. So with the productivity tips, and it's why I love that category of content in general, like out from other mm -hmm. MVPs and experts that are out there is because, you know, nine times out of 10, I've seen it before, I've used it before, but then there's that 10th one where like, wow, I didn't know that it did that. I didn't know it worked like that. Mm -hmm. That's how often the end user training is. People are bored to tears. They're going through the basics, things that like, I know this stuff, I know this stuff. Whoa, wait a second. I had no idea that I could do yeah. that, that it worked like that. And that oh. happens to everybody oh, yeah. in those sessions. So this is exactly the why my presentation Quick Wins came about, right? Quick Wins, because people like, but they didn't know how to use it, what they could do with it, or these little caveats, right? I've had people in like my one hour Quick Wins session say, that five minutes that you just showed me that paid for my entire trip to this event, right? Because it made them more efficient. They were able to get more done. Um, so, and the cool thing is, is that presentation, I've given it so many times. I bet you over 200 times, right? Because it's a constantly changing because the technology keeps changing and new things keep coming out, right? Um, you know, I even have been working on a, literally a workshop. It's Microsoft 365 A to Z which goes through the different apps and how you could use them within your organization and, and stuff like that. Well, what did you put down for Q? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, for the Q slide is literally some some like quick wins type of stuff, littler yeah. things. So, you, yeah, right. but thank you, because it yeah. took me a while to figure out what the heck I was going to do for Q, but thank yeah. you. Yeah. So what I want to say about this is is looking at it from an aspect of not only educating the users, which I took a little different approach when I was doing some 365 migrations. I did a, I went and talked to people and found out what the problems that they have currently and tried to match them up with the solutions that 365 gave. And then I would, I would show them that, hey, the problem that you have over here doesn't exist over here. Or the problem you had over here, you can work around it with this in 365. 
and that they became more receptive at that point of that yeah. that transition. But I will say that there are so many variables in this in this question because number one, there's st- it says starting with Microsoft 365. Where are they coming from? Mm-hmm. Are they what environment exactly. are they actually coming from? Are they mm-hmm. coming from an environment that's all Google Apps? Are they coming from an environment that is like, you know, prehistoric and they're still using Lotus Notes and, you know, things like that? What, or just what, a file share, right? Yeah, or they're just using a file share and they're using, uh, you know, basic spreadsheets for everything. I, you know, it all depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, each each one is 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 unique. So when you say the biggest challenges, really the biggest challenges is identifying what they currently have and use and how they use it and matching it to what they can be doing, could be doing and should be doing in 365. Yeah. That to me was the hardest part because it's not a one for one. Usually right. it's not. Usually it's not as simple as, oh, you're going from Google Docs to Microsoft Word. It's not mm-hmm. that simple. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's it the two don't the two don't look alike, they don't work alike, they don't anything alike. And, um, and that's like the features, that's like the, the so the user experience, the interface itself. Then there's an and Mike, you had before we were start recording, you mentioned this too, is is the migration of the of the data. Yeah. Being able to you know, y- your adoption could be tied to whether you can find your content. So it's not just moving from that other location, those other environments, all of your data over there, but it's also then how you reorganize uh, uh, you know, that content within the new system. Right. So is it going it is from different. Google is it going yeah. from Google Drive into OneDrive? Is it going mm-hmm. into or are you going to are you going to you know introduce your users to SharePoint? You know, mm-hmm. uh, well, we're going to move everything from Google Drive into SharePoint and you know you going from Google Drive to SharePoint is a huge jump. Huge yeah. jump. Um Going from Google Drive to OneDrive, not so much because it's just file shares, right? Not right. a big deal. But the thing about it is, is that there, there are nuances between all of them. Now, I'm just using, you know, the Google Apps as an example. But realistically, I had a company that not only a year ago was still using Lotus Notes. That's why I brought that up. Yeah. They're yep. still using Lotus applications because they're strictly an IBM shop. That's, you know, mm-hmm. everything is was IBM. So, you know, to, to try and match that up, was like that's hard matching, well, up that, a, matching up a dinosaur you know uh, kind of application to something that is is a fighter modern. jet yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy well, <laughs> well there, so i was actually going to bring up that exact same example so i've worked with dozens of companies that were lotus notes companies and moving over to the microsoft stack and uh and one of the clients in very large financial services uh, company it was being driven kind of top down. The C- new CIO said we're going to Microsoft technology, forcing the org, and they had a lot of problems because mm-hmm. people hadn't bought into that. So, um, big part of it was they didn't take the time to really get the buy in from the organization of the value of why we're moving, what it'll bring us. So, they hadn't sold people on that. Like, you need to have some degree of buy in from the organization do do that feature mapping show you know how yeah. things move across how you move the data now i, I was going to bring up another point uh that with like the, from the migration standpoint of all of that content lotus notes works very different you know it's different functionality this is just one example uh, for a user yeah. adoption there but yeah. what what it was the learning from an, uh, a user adoption standpoint was that there's only so much that you can automate with tools to move on the back end that there there has to be a strategy that is user driven to mm-hmm. train people on the new features they know where their old content is and it's almost you can spend all the time trying to move it on the back end and make it all line up and map it the exact same way and tag things properly or you can train users on, hey, here's the new system, give them time to do it, say within the next 60 days, and then they go move their content. They do that. And they and know so, where it is. They right. know where it is. And, so yeah. funny how when you ask the people who own the content to manage their content, how yeah. things get put in the right places. Or, yeah. or, they, or they recognize that I no longer lead, need this content. Yeah, so that's where so that, training the, it becomes important, right? I right. mean, you train them because 
take, I mean, so a situation I'm in right now, like file share. Everybody knows there's no organization in a file share. There's four copies of everything and all this kind of stuff. And they don't have views and all this kind of stuff. You train them and then you just show them examples, right? Examples of how their content can look in SharePoint so they can find it easier, all that kind of stuff. And, and they're sold, right? But you got to show them first. The other thing that I do is when it talk about the app, you know, the mapping that Mike was referring to, is I find the things that they should start with because that's what they're using right now. And I turn all the other apps off so that they can focus on their current needs. And once that's then as the company's deciding, okay, now we want to introduce these apps and then these, and then do the training as you go on, because you give them too many apps all at once, content is going to be everywhere and everybody's going to be doing it differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Funny how that happens. I know, what do you, right? you got anything, Hal? From my end of it, it's... Uh not so much Lotus Notes and uh, things like that. The stuff that I've dealt with has always been uh, small businesses and people who start off using Outlook.com. Or as we were discussing earlier, they get a family, uh, an Office 365 family, which it just basically, again, is Outlook.com with you. You throw in some of the uh, Microsoft productivity applications. And in those cases, if you're moving, it's it's even a little bit more difficult there because if you're if you're, when you're moving from that area <clears throat> to full Office 365, they already have substantial familiarity with email and and Word and Excel and things like that. But they aren't even close to understanding the differences between the two systems and the advantages and the extras and the other bounty brony points and, and and stuff you can do that you couldn't do. And yeah, that, that can be really confusing. Well, yeah, I've used this. This I've I've used Outlook forever, and, and yada and so on. And why doesn't it? Well, it doesn't work here because it's a different place, and you've got different features and different functionality. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same. Um, most of it is the same. Granted, but you've got different things in different places, and, and well, you've got it on the web. You've got it on your desktop. You've got it on your phone. You, a lot of that you couldn't do with the uh, with with the situation that it was, and there's a. <laughs> in this case, not only do you have to learn, but you have to unlearn first. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I, I was just thinking of how practically how we've handled this uh, how in the past. So as much training up front, you get that structured, you get that in place, you let people know, hey, here's what we'll be going through, you know, with all the materials. Also, as those questions come in. And a lot of the questions are that mapping between the old and the new. And people ask those questions. You may not have it properly documented. The new system may not handle it the same way or handle it at all. Whatever that is, have detailed FAQs that are searchable that people can get through. Then on top of all that, one of the best tools in larger organizations, this goes back to my experience in the, in the 90s, uh, working for the phone company, was doing the Friday lunch and learns where mm -hmm. you had users that had done the, the mapping themselves. And then they said, here's what I did. And here's how I dealt with this change. And this is what I learned about it and sharing that. And that was, and we had those at a couple, few companies, three companies that I worked for over the, over the 30 years that did it on a regular, like almost weekly basis, had the lunch and learns. And so people would go in and and they you know state like here's the business problem I'm trying to solve and and we had some people that I, I'm just like nobody's going to show up to that everybody knows how to do that the room is packed like everybody has those same questions yeah. so you can't you know managing all this assume that you know what questions people are going to bring document mm -hmm. FAQs have the lunch and learns around that and then modify your ongoing training so you can learn from the people that have been trained what else you need to add to the people that have not yet been trained.